This lecture gives a comprehensive coverage of clinical examination of cardiovascular system including inspection, palpation, percussion and auscultation. We will start off with inspection of the precardium. Precordial examination starts with inspection, though inspection and palpation are often combined in regular practice. Some of the features to look for are sternal deformities like pectus excavatum, which is a concavity of the sternum and is the commonest congenital malformation of the chest wall, which may be associated with congenital heart diseases like ventricular septal defect. Pectus carinatum is sternal prominence also known as pigeon chest. This can occur in congenital heart diseases with large left right shunts in infancy. Second, visible pulsations. Suprasternal pulsations can be seen in aortic aneurysm and aortic regurgitation. A large dilated pulmonary artery can cause pulsations in the second left intercostal space. Left parasternal pulsations can be seen in right ventricular enlargement. Grossly enlarged left atrium with mitral regurgitation and dilated right ventricular outflow tract in Epstein's anomaly are other rare causes of left parasternal pulsations. Right ventricular outflow tract pulsations in Epstein's anomaly are often better seen than felt. It is a wavy pulsation. Similar right ventricular outflow tract pulsations may be seen in right ventricular endomyocardial fibrosis as well. Enlarged right ventricle can cause epigastric pulsations. Pulsations above the epical impulse are noted in left ventricular aneurysm. Submitral left ventricular aneurysm can also cause pulsations on the left cardiac border. Right parasternal pulsations may occur with grossly dilated aortic root. Third category is surgical scars. Midline sternotomy scar is probably the commonest in the adult and can be after coronary artery bypass grafting or valve replacements. Androlateral thoracotomy scars are noted after a closed mitral valvotomy and some pericardial surgeries. Posterolateral thoracotomy scars are seen after surgeries on great vessels like closure of patent ductus arteriosus and repair of coarctation of iota. Fourth category are the dilated veins. Dilated veins can occur with obstruction of superior or inferior vena cava. Direction of blood flow in the dilated veins will be downwards in superior vena cava obstruction and upwards in inferior vena cava obstruction. Five dilated arteries. Dilated intercostal arteries and anastomosis around the scapula may be visible in coarctation of iota, but they are often better felt than seen. Apex beat is better characterized by palpation though it is often visible. Now we will move on to palpation of the precordium and adjacent areas. Palpation initially confirms the findings of inspection and further looks for new findings. One apex beat. Apex beat is defined as the lowest and outermost point of definite cardiac impulse. If apex beat is not felt on the left side, immediately check on the right side or else we might miss a dextrocardia. There are some who even palpate both sides simultaneously for this reason. Apex beat is initially felt with the palm of the hand and then localized with the index finger. Sometimes it may be difficult to palpate in obese individuals and in those with emphysema. Palpation in held expiration and in left lateral position may help in localization. Normal apex beat is felt in the fifth left intercostal space, typically about 1 cm medial to the mid clavicular line. Tapping apex beat is the palpable counterpart of a loud first heart sound in mitral stenosis. A forceful apex beat is seen in regurgitant lesions like aortic and mitral regurgitation. It is also called a hyperdynamic apex. 
Heaving apex speed is both forceful and sustained and is characteristic of left ventricular hypertrophy of severe aortic stenosis. Dyskinetic apex in left ventricular aneurysm is a seesaw pulsation with an additional out of phase bulge above the lowest impulse. Point of maximum impulse is sometimes checked when the apical impulse is diffuse and difficult to localize. Pulse apex deficit is a term used in atrial fibrillation to note the difference between pulse rate and the rate of apical impulses. Pulse deficit is usually more than 10 per minute in atrial fibrillation as all beats may not have a good pulse in the fast irregular rhythm. Double epical impulse and triple epical impulse may be felt in hypertrophic obstructive cardiomyopathy. In hypertrophic obstructive cardiomyopathy, one of the impulses may be diastolic being the palpable component of a loud fourth heart sound due to forceful atrial contraction. Left parasternal heave Left parasternal heave is felt with the ulnar aspect of the palm which is kept perpendicular to the precordium. It is a feature of right ventricular hypertrophy. Hyperdynamic left precordial pulsations which are not so forceful can be noted in atrial septal defect with large left to right shunt even without severe pulmonary hypertension and right ventricular hypertrophy. Pulsations in second left intercostal space Pulsations in second left intercostal space indicate large pulmonary artery and are better felt with the fingertips after flexing the proximal interphalangeal joints at right angle. Right parasternal pulsations may be noted if the aortic root is grossly dilated. Hepatic pulsations are better felt by bimanual palpation with one hand over the right hypochondrium and another over the back. Pre-systolic pulsations are noted in tricuspid stenosis and systolic pulsations in tricuspid regurgitation. Sussman sign is the visible or palpable collaterals in the upper back in coarctation of aorta. They are better seen on bending forwards. Thrills are the palpable counterparts of cardiac murmurs and generally associated with very loud murmurs grade 4 and above. Thrills are better appreciated with the ulnar aspect of the palm of the hand. Location and timing of the thrill depends on the cause. Thrills can be systolic, diastolic or continuous. They can be timed with respect to the carotid pulse just like murmurs. Thrill of aortic stenosis can be felt in the second right intercostal space or the left parasternal region. In pulmonary stenosis, it is present in the second left intercostal space. Both these are systolic thrills. Thrill of small ventricular septal defect known as malady the Roger is systolic and noted in the left parasternal region. Systolic thrill of mitral regurgitation is felt at the apex. Diastolic thrill of mitral stenosis is highly localized to the apex. Diastolic thrill may occur in aortic regurgitation in the left parasternal region. Continuous thrill in the first and second space on the left side is noted in patent ductus arteriosus. Please don't forget to subscribe to this channel for future updates and click on the bell icon for all updates. Thank you.